Hello and welcome to this free preview for Kinzar's Blades. Uh, now we'll be teaching you how to wet blend metallics, how to add interesting ambience to your miniatures. Yep, ambience, I used that word. And to talk about the explosions that happen off camera. Kinzar's Blades. Now I'll be showing you a tutorial which is very quite different from what we've been through previously. We begin with Viking Gold. This is from the Scale 75 set. We also have Elven Gold on the palette. And we can wet blend these two together. Uh, so to begin with, uh, on top of the armor plate that we've painted previously, we add decayed, uh, sorry, decayed, Viking Gold plus Elven Gold 50-50 together with one another to reinvigorate the metallic pigment. Uh, so that was given the base layer of Viking Gold plus uh, Elven Gold uh, in the beginning, and then added uh, an oil wash over the top. Once this is completely utterly dry, it dries nice and matte. We apply a matte varnish over everything, then we apply this stage. However, we will be coming back to that Viking Gold and Elven Gold for the blades themselves. So while I fill in the details here, let's take you through the, the I guess, theory behind this. When you have a silver blade, the purer the blade, the more the ambient surroundings it does reflect. So if you're trying to paint a silver blade, sure, you can use dark silver, medium silver, light silver. Looks functional, looks okay. Doesn't sparkle though, it doesn't send off that tuning fork inside your loins. In order to do that, you need to introduce much, much more colour variance to your blades. You want to imagine what's happening off camera, so to speak, off screen. Is there a, f uh, a fire? Uh, in the distance is there an explosion what kind of setting is your miniature in uh, is he standing in the middle of a firestorm is it at night is it during the day etc etc once you have these ideas in your mind once you have the story of the surrounding miniature in mind you can start to build a lot more complex of a color scheme on top of this now once the elven gold and viking gold has been applied to the gold areas we introduce a pinch of silver from Vallejo Air. Now I only use this Vallejo Air uh, metallic colors for my metallics because they operate so so nicely. The regular paints I find a little bit stodgy. I find that the metallic airbrush paints they mill to a much finer consistency. So when you apply them on the miniature you get much more satisfying metallic pigment to them. To this we also have Ruby Alchemy by Scale 75. <coughs> which is this very light pink, almost like salmon pink color. This is added uh, to his WWE belt and it's meant to reflect the ambient surroundings again of the miniature. By adding that small amount of red to the top highlight, even though it may not look... If you asked an observer, what color is that? They'd say gold. How would you highlight it? Probably adding silver. But we know, we are smart. We, we are cleverer than that. We are cleverer than a fox here. We've added a high value, so it's a light, silvery, salmon colour to the highlights. We've introduced much more colour nuance to the top highlights. And it gives us just a much more satisfying look to the miniature. We'll also be using on the blade itself. Uh, I'm using a Rosemarine Co. number 1 Kalinsky Sable Hair. And the primary aim of this highlight is to define the lines of the miniature. Okay, dive straight in with Ruby Alchemy on the edge of the blade. You can see it's tip lead medium pressure. Then we use Viking Gold along the side of the blade here. No transitions, no blending so far. Silver is then wet blended through the center of the blade. there and there and already it doesn't look anywhere nearly as aggressive as our first brush strokes would indicate so while I'm allowing that to dry I'm just picking out a few more details in this top crest in the Ruby Alchemy uh, now if you've never used the scale 75 paints before highly recommended uh, I'd probably look to buy the sets uh, purely because I started buying them individually and ended up buying sets and now I have a hodgepodge of colours 
So if you're new to um, if you're new to this Patreon, well, especially if you're new to this Patreon, you scale seventy five and everything. Uh, if you are new to watching these videos and you're looking for a new paint range to experiment with, highly recommend scale seventy five. And you know what? I'm giving that recommendation without a sponsorship. So you can be sure that I'm not trying to shill for them. I don't earn a goddamn penny off those people. Paints are excellent. Uh, wet palette has a little bit to be desired, but that's another story. Uh, pa paints are exceptional. Right. And as you can see, I'm using a dry palette for this. I don't want to use a wet palette. If I used a wet palette, then we'd run the risk of the metallic pigments floating um, to, to the underneath of the sponge being soaked up and then traveling along the sponge and popping up somewhere else and ruining another piece uh, of our miniature. So I tend to use dry palettes with this. Oop, okay. I am wet blending magnesium, uh, which is a Vallejo metal color. It's an airbrush paint, but it's been specifically designed uh, for more realistic metallic textures. They cost slightly more, they come in a bigger tube, a bigger bottle. Uh, this is something I've been experimenting with for the past couple of years. Very happy with the experimentation. Sorry, I just dropped a, uh, a phone charger off camera. Okay, Viking gold is added to the underside of the blade. And you can see it's, it's that magic trick we're playing uh, with the viewer. That even though you're looking at this, you know there are notes of silver and, and pink and, and red. It still looks silver. It, it, it's a magic trick that you play on people uh, because it's reflecting the ambience, right? And your eye can discern that. Your eye knows, oh, I'm seeing uh, like an explosion off camera. Uh, the brush strokes themselves at this stage, it's all structural. So there's no glazing, it's all layering. It's all medium to uh, high uh, pressure with the brush. It's mainly tip lead. Uh, unless it comes to these broad sweeps, which we're doing here, which encompasses maybe the top ooh, fifth of the brush. So you can see quite a lot of it comes into contact with the surface of the miniature itself. The underside of the blade is also given uh, Ruby Alchemy. So the fat end of the brush is applied and I'm dragging the pigment to where I want it to sit. At this stage, it is all structural. If you are unsure of where to place shadows and highlights in relation to one another, place a single layer of Ruby Alchemy across the entirety of the blade. Take lots of photos and this will give you a guide as to where to place shadows and highlights. It's amazing what taking photos can do for your work. Somehow you can be a lot more critical and you can see what needs to be done with a lot more clarity, I guess, than just viewing it for yourself. Can't see the wood through the trees and all that. Okay, it needs to be a little bit more circumspect. No, I believe that's... I'm using that word in the correct context. Probably just made myself sound like an idiot. Uh, right, tip of the brush along the edge of the blade. And you can see the, the many fine movements I'm making there that are like in quick succession with one another to build up that, that transition. And that's done with a silver on the edge of the blade. Again, the paint uh, is a layer consistency. It's practically straight out of the bottle. The only uh, thinner we've used is water, and it's only the natural moisture that sits in the brush itself. From here, we can add a few refining marks. I sped up the video. Don't worry, I don't paint this. I wish I could paint this quickly. I don't paint this quickly. Uh, refining marks are made primarily with the tip of the brush. So we define the shadows. We define those highlights. We define the, the, the tip of, of, the, uh, of the sword. Red ink is applied again with the tip of the blade to represent it the, the, the purity of the steel catching different colors in the immediate surroundings. Thank you very much for watching that video tutorial. If you have any questions, concerns, problems, you know where to hit me up. Uh, please feel free to share this video with uh, friends and loved ones. Uh, I'm sure your gran would love to know how to wet blend metallics. If you did enjoy this preview and you wanted to uh, help your own painting, 
if you want to help yourself, please consider signing up for the Patreon. Uh, we have uh, pledges from $1 uh, to 15 and then if you wanted one-to-one -one tuition, uh, they are available every quarter. New places are open up. But in the meantime, for $15, you get the full Black li Back Library, you get the full PDF uh, Vault, and you get every, every single seminar we've done to date, which is about four years worth of content, which covers the gamut from Black Armor black skin tone we have wet blending metallics we have free hand tutorials we have everything the only problem you'll have is knowing where to start first and for that we have an essential series which which does get you uh, a soft introduction to the wide dizzying array of video tutorials that we do have thank you very much i'll catch you in the next video